Hello, fellas. I thought I would make. I thought I would experiment with a video format. Um. I I I don't actually know what I'm. This this game is. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about the game that's happening right now. Is this a let's play? Am I doing? Am I doing my first? Actually, it would not be my first let's play. Hello, hello, fella. Hello, big fella. Hello, big boy. <laughs> that's how we're gonna start the video. Uh, which is appropriate to lead into my first topic. Which is, in fact, this video game, Counter-Strike Global Offensive. So I've been playing this game for... Well, I, I don't know how many years. So many years. Seven, maybe, years. Um, and uh, I'm not that good at it, to be honest. Uh, one of the reasons I'm not that good at it is... Uh, well, it's 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 a complicated situation. Um, it's a complicated situation, but essentially, at first I played the game like you're supposed to. It's a it's a competitive game, and so I played competitively, tried to get better, tried to improve myself, blah blah blah, and. Uh, it just made me mad. The more, the better I got, the higher standard I held myself to. And uh, my problem has always been consistency. Like one game I'll do really well, the next game I'll do really bad, the next game I'll do average, the next game I'll do really bad, blah, blah, blah. I, and between days especially, you know, I'll have like a really good day and the next day I'll play like shit and I'll be like, oh, how am I playing so bad? I played so good yesterday. Um... And so that would make me really mad. It's like a g great formula to make a person mad because, uh, you know, you see yourself doing well and you think, wow, I'm improving. And then you see yourself doing really badly without seemingly doing anything different. And you just feel like shit. You just feel like, oh, like I can never improve at anything. Nothing is meaningful, blah, blah, blah. No matter how hard I work, I don't seem to get any better type of deal. Um, and so I uh, I basically stopped playing the game for like uh, maybe a year, maybe like eight months. Um, this is this was a while ago, and uh, then I I picked the game back up at some point, and uh, when I picked the game back up, I discovered that it was actually way more fun to play the game when you don't take it seriously and don't play competitively, and what I it, because my 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 approach became. There's there's nothing actually in the game that forces you to want what the game wants you to want. The game wants you to rank up, right? That's kind of the the the, the psychology of 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 CS:GO. It's like if the, what's the what's the goal of the game is win matches so that you can get a higher rank. Um, and I I just thought, well, there's actually no reason to do that. You know, there's nothing forcing me to play like that. I can just choose not to. Uh, what if I what if I try just play completely to have fun, hit wacky shots, say wacky things to people on the mic, do do wacky things, go for lots of Zeus's and stuff. And so that's how I played for like three years, um, ranking down. Eventually, I started playing only nuke because it's the best map to play that's like that on. Uh, even before I th started watching Franz J, or before he started popping off, I was already playing. Uh, I, you know, I used to hate Nuke when I was playing competitively because it's a it's a fucking weird map to play competitively. Uh, um, but playing to have fun, Nuke is the best map. So I started playing a lot of Nuke, and then. Franz J started popping off, so I like started playing more Nuke after seeing his videos, and then getting more into that sort of scene, Smiley BS and people like that. I'd already one of the, th the things that helped me on this mission is that in the past I s speed ran Half Life One, and uh, so I learned to B hop, and uh, the B hopping in Half Life and CS:GO is slightly different, but it's basically a transferable skill, and being able to B hop makes the game way more fun if you're trying to play for fun. So over these three years of me playing for fun, it starts off amazing. You know, it starts off really fun. I rank, I de-rank on purpose. 
and then I play against Silvers and just like Zeus them, knife them, blah, blah, blah. Then eventually I rank back up and then I queue some D-rank lobbies, rank back down, blah, 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 lose on purpose. Uh, stuff like that. And over the, over time, the problem happens that because I've not been playing seriously, what the fuck? Okay, because I've, because I've not been playing seriously, uh, and, and not been like taking time to practice aiming or anything like that uh, i'm just sort of not actually developing any skills uh i'm not getting any better at the game I'm, I'm basically staying the same and maybe even getting slightly worse at anything getting slightly worse at like the the actual fundamentals of the game getting significantly better at movement but um not much better at, at shooting uh and so i basically stay the same in terms of skill level where the game, uh, as people who follow CS knows, uh, although it's one of the biggest games in the world, it uh, has sort of leveled off, it's plateaued in terms of player base. It's not gaining many new players. Um, and uh, in fact, so it's, it, it basically everyone else is getting better. To put it simply, the skill floor has been raising for these three years. It's been raising since the game came out, but it's been seriously raising over this time period. And so, uh, now, as you can see, I lose to silvers because I am now a silver. Uh, the, the level of skill that is required to be a silver is now higher. Uh, it's, I, I don't even know how you would begin as a new player to play this game right now because uh, the skill floor is as high as it took me two years of playing seriously to get to back in the day. So... So my my strategy stopped working. My and then because Franz J popped off, people on YouTube, a lot of people are like aware of 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 a lot of these strategies that I use, or the sort of movement type play style, and they 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 know how to counter it. They're expecting it and they know how to counter it. So that became less fun because it just became dying every round. And uh, it became less fun because you c you could no longer troll people who were bad because the people weren't that bad anymore. Uh, so, uh, about four days ago, I decided um, th this is no longer fun for me. Um, but actually, before that, I'd basically stopped playing CS because it was no longer fun. Again, I'd sort of stopped. I'd taken a few months of not playing. And then I got back on. This time I've been playing with Kiaresu, uh recently. Um, because I got this, this new desktop and I'm like, yeah, gaming moment. Uh, so I, I, I started playing CS again. And this time I'm thinking like, okay, I've had my fun, but that play style is no longer possible. What if I actually try and get better again? Uh, and actually put some dedication into it. Now, I'm not sure if this is going to last. You know, I'm not the best at doing things for a long period of time consistently. It's like my biggest weakness as a human being. So I don't think it's going to last very long. But um, at least for the moment, I'm trying to get better, which is why I am currently playing wingman, deagle only, and getting fucked. Because for the past four days... Every day I've basically been going and grinding out about eight hours a day of wingman, deagle only. Which is a fucking experience, let me tell you. And I, every day I start off shit, then I have one good game, and then I'm like, oh, I've warmed up. And then I play like shit for another five hours. And then I finally like properly warm up, and I start playing well. And then by the time QS is uh, done waging and is ready to hop on for a game, and I'm like, you know, it's the Rock Lee moment where you, you, he takes off his weights in Naruto Shippuden or whatever the fuck. I don't know if that's Shippuden. I don't, I don't know what Shippuden actually is. But anyway, it's, it's that moment where, like, the anime character takes off his training weights and goes crazy. You know, I, I get to buy an AK and an AWP and stuff. Uh, but by the time that happens, I'm, I'm tired and I'm I'm kind of worn out from playing all day. And so I play like shit and I feel like shit. Uh, so that's the cycle I'm currently trapped in. Uh, 
and uh, right, it's it's. I, I've not been feeling the best lately either. I've I've just been feeling like shit, really. I mean, I've been feeling kind of depressed, but also uh, I've been just feeling weird in terms of like. I sometimes get like this, and sometimes it lasts for months, uh, which sucks. In in fact, one of the worst periods of my life ever is when this lasted for like two months. Just, uh, I'm dead. Just uh, f- basically brain fog. And uh, at this point, I'm starting to worry if it's like something physiological. If it's like I have a brain tumor or something. But that that would be that would be funny. Then per brain tumor moment. But yeah, I don't. It's probably nothing. I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm just fucking retarded. I don't know. It feels like my IQ is dropping by the day, which sucks. Early onset dementia. I'm also weirdly good pistol round, which doesn't make you see. Like I can just hit for some reason. If it's a Glock <laughs> or <laughs> uh, the the this one, the P two thousand or whatever the fuck it's called, P two fifty. I I can hear the headshots, but as soon as it's a uh, uh, fucking deagle, oh, I bought an AK without thinking. Whoops. Oh well. Now you get to see me. I uh, have no idea how to do spray control. Okay, so I know this guy is over here, but he can't see me, and I can't see him. The other guy, CT, as I suspected. Uh, tried to go for the tap shooting method there, but it didn't quite work out. I'm I'm doing a good job segueing. I I had a good segue here. So, you you talk about the CS:GO and how it emotionally affects you, which then you talk about why these emotions matter in context. That I've been depressed, and now I can talk about how uh, I can talk about being depressed. Uh, and sad and de- and suicidal or whatever. Fuck. Um. I, am I suicidal? I don't think so. Not really. I I I wrote a good quote the other day. Sometimes I I write something and I'm like, that's a g- that was a good piece of little sentence. That was a good sentence, and it was something like, um. Actually, oh wait, I don't have that. Key. It's on my ThinkPad somewhere, but I wrote it down. It was something like, um. Uh, to be honest, uh, like it was something like I'm happy now. Like I have a a satisfy satisfying happy life. But to be honest, happiness isn't that much better than being miserable. <laughs> uh, so I thought put it into words what I've been feeling recently pretty well. I also bought an AK again without thinking, uh, but whatever. Uh, and it's true. Um, I I saw Osaka's latest video and I've been talking to Osaka recently and they've been fairly depressed for for reasonable reasons as you know maybe they don't want me to talk about it but they t- they talked about it in the video so I'm sure it's not it's not secret uh, who isn't depressed these days anyway uh I, did I buy an AK again or did I just keep the AK I just kept the AK right whatever um and uh, you know, Osaka blames this on a lot of things, which are perfectly reasonable. But right now, I'm in a position where I put fucking put an AK again without thinking. This is like the muscle memory that, you, whatever. Um, like right now, I have like enough money to survive. I have a place to live. I have the hobbies I enjoy ish. Um, <laughs> I have a girlfriend who's who I who's who's pretty pretty neat. Uh, a nice computer, lots of friends online, enough friends offline, nice job. Um, (laughs) He said nice microphone. Thank you. Uh, You can take the, no, I'll take the AK, okay, fuck it. We're winning this one then, I guess. Like uh, generally speaking, I'm pretty satisfied with my life. Like they they say, like what well, you can't actually aim for, for happiness. What you can aim for is contentedness, right? Like not wanting for anything more. Um, yeah, GG. 
because like happiness is a temporary sensation it's a temporary emotional state by its nature if you were in a position where you're happy all the time you sort of get used to it i, I believe they call it the hedonistic treadmill or something where like uh why ex- if you do the same thing that makes you happy over and over again eventually it makes you less and less happy and then you, that becomes your base neutral state and then you have to thrust thrust uh, lust i think was the f- word i meant to use there lust after more to to make, get the same level of happiness you do it before so you can't sustain being happy but you can sustain being contented right just sort of having everything you want in life not sort of w- like oh i wish i had this i wish i had that and right now i'm i'm basically in that situation like there's not much i mean there's 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 stuff that's like big like i wish i i you know um had like uh, 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 some some farmland or something right where i could grow my own food or farm oysters and mussels and like in 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 the ocean or something like that right but these are sort of like pipe dreams sort of stuff like generally speaking i don't desire too much right now i, I i'm not someone who desires a lot of things in general but yeah i also kind of wish i could make better music right now cuz I've I've completely fallen off and I, I did, this is it's really making me feel like shit. It's like actually seriously negative affecting me my inability to make music right now. Uh it's kind of fucking me up in a, in a big way. It's kind of making me it, it it's it, it's fucked. It's actually very, it's probably like the worst thing happening to me right now is the fact that I don't seem to be able to make music that I feel is amazing anymore or not amazing but like up to my own standard. M- mainly because my standards changed. If I right now like the problem is that was a good shot. The problem is um you know w- the all of the albums I want to make, I I make them uh, and then they're good and it's like okay, well I've already done that. Now I can't just make that again. Like Dead Form is the best version of Dead Form it could be or I wouldn't have put it out. Um etc so i have to come up with another idea and also do it as well as it has to be both a really good idea and i have to execute it perfectly uh which is a lot of pressure to put myself under so i should really normally when i get in this position i i i make a yes like that's why yes thank you exists so that i can have a no a zero pressure outlet for music that can be bad if i want it to be uh the problem is <laughs> I, uh ever since i i, I made um Benjamin's Dragon Millionaire turned out to actually be a really good album by mistake and now I'm fucked because now even Yes Thank You has pressure. So I don't know what's what? Hello. Net English. See, I told you, pistol round, I pop off. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> he says, GG, uh, I'm only good pistol round. <laughs> oh. Why is he coming with me? Very strange. Strange behavior from this Polak from this Polsky. I'll go around and flank. Is he coming with me? What's he doing? What is this is not the strat. He should wait B and I go flank. Okay, well whatever. This is just gonna be a weird round. Uh yeah, I was talking about how I can't make good music anymore, but that's something that's not very easy to fix. <laughs> the it's not like I did what I'm saying is it's not like I in terms of Maslow's hierarchy of Sneeds He's, why am I playing time? I'm CTs. Fuck, that was a really, that was really bad for me. That was, uh, that was very bad. I, I thought he was worse. Well, he was bad. I don't have an excuse. I just played badly. My aim was just bad. Because I'm fucking feeling weird. Because I'm fucking feeling weird. And what? I, I don't understand what this guy's saying. Hold on a second. Uh, oh, fuck. What's the... 
I've I've forgotten. Isn't it voice on uh, voice? Okay, let's turn turn voice enables over on. Where are my fucking bullets going? None of them hit him? That doesn't seem possible. Okay. Back to what I was talking about. But like other than those that big existential question of what am I gonna do with my life and I can't fucking make music, oh god, I can't make good music, kill me, kill me, kill me. Uh, other than those two things I'm pretty contented. Uh what is this guy up what is this guy fucking up to? I think he's probably talking to me, but I have the voice turned off. Uh Hold on, I gotta focus for a second. Fuck. I expected him to fall back after I shot him for the first time, and then I could re peek and wait for him to peek, but he stayed peaked. Which I guess was the smart thing to do in that situation. Uh yeah, I'm pretty contented. I don't I don't want for much, but why is this guy follow me? It's very strange. It's a very strange person. The Polish are a strange race, I've often said. There's one. Fuck. Uh, um. <laughs> yeah, and I'm st I still feel like shit. It's what I'm trying to tell you. It's pretty simple. I've been trying to say this for ages. Look, I, I should be happy, but I'm not, is the sort of general situation we're in. Um, which just sort of reconfirms what I've been saying this whole time, which is that uh, living is a form of suffering. It, it's got nothing to do with your material conditions being good or bad. As long as you're alive, you're you're going to be feeling like shit. Uh, be, to be alive is to be feeling like shit. Those are the same thing. Uh, I don't really have anywhere to take that other than, uh, I hope, I hope me and my friends manage to not kill ourselves. In terms of suicide, I think suicide is less a problem of philosophy and more a problem of physics, Newtonian physics. It's basically an object in motion wants to stay in motion, an object at rest wants to stay at rest. Before you're born, you're an object at rest. It takes a few years, you know, I, I personally believe that uh, you're not really alive, you're not like fully human, you're not like fully conscious, pe like at the point where blah, 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 before you speak complex sentences, or um, at like th about three and a half years old. But anyway, even if you don't believe that, nine months it takes to get the ball rolling. And let me tell you, this is a this is a fucking massive ball. This is a big ball. It's actually it's not that big, but it's big enough that it takes an average of like eighty years to slow to to get it to stop. Um, but life life drags it down, and uh, what I'm saying is essentially, uh, if you ask me on a philosophical logical level, shh should should a human being kill themselves um i don't i don't think i can make a convincing ar uh, argument enough to convince myself uh not to um let alone i mean it depends on your philosophical position if you if you uh, believe in god or if you believe in a lot of other stuff you can probably come up with some ideas based on morality or ethics or whatever um, in either direction. But as an egoist type of, d from an egoist perspective or from a logical perspective, from a moral nihilist perspective, blah, blah, um, you can't really do that. Um, all I can say is pretty simply, uh, I have survival instincts that keep me from, uh, you know, they make me scared of dying and I don't really want to do it because it's scary. That's pretty much it. Uh, it's a, yeah. It's just I'm, I'm, and then 
it, it's just sort of a deal of like, you know, I'm sure just like any sort of survival instincts, like when I when I go climbing, sometimes it's scary when you're doing difficult moves high up and you're not, you know, you're bouldering, you're, uh, you're not tied in and you're at the top of a wall and you have to stand on a, you have to, to put your foot on a, um, a smear and you then stand up and, and reach for something. It's scary, but uh, you learn to trust yourself and you learn to get over your, your fear. So I'm sure with an equal amount of effort, you can do that for the fear of death. But I don't really want to. I don't see why I would. I think it's a useful, <laughs> I think it's kind of useful in a lot of cases. And um, yeah, I can't say I like being alive, but I can't say I want to die either. Uh, which is very, s it's a very strange sort of limbo to live in. Um, this is a strange topic to be talking about as I play Counter-Strike with Ankara. I've been to Ankara. It's a place in Turkey. Isn't it the capital city of Turkey? Don't remember. So let's brighten up the mood a little bit. Uh, oh, I have some messages from my man. Oh, Henry Mancini. Don't know who that is. Oh, we will check out. Um, I'm going to listen to this voice note. Right, I probably shouldn't put this stuff on YouTube. Okay, I'll listen to the voice note later. That's a private message. <laughs> I should not record those and put them on YouTube for everyone to see. Uh, if you're a solipsist... Wait, I was trying to lighten up the mood, but now I'm I'm back thinking about this. So there's there's a there's a guy on YouTube called Tim Rogers, and um, he makes very long video game reviews that you might have seen. Uh, but he's also a writer, and he has a blog. And I read his blog post called, I think it's called Just Like Hamburger, Exactly Like Hamburger, which is a fucking um, it's amazing piece of writing. Um, it's it's just brilliant. It's really long, but it's definitely worth reading uh, if you get the time. Um, because, well, I, I won't make this, well, that was cool. I won't make this into a review of just like hamburger, exactly like hamburger, but um, just uh, just know that it has both mine and Dotsmite's strong recommendation as a piece of writing. Um, I'm sure you can find it. Um, how, after I finished reading that, and God, that put me in a, f I was already in a mood, and that put me in a fucking mood. That was a surreal day. Um, but after I finished reading that, I was like, I can't go directly from that to what I was planning to do, which is the new, the, the what was at the time the newest episode of the Yard podcast, which is Ludwig and his friends podcast, which is also a very good podcast, but uh, very much comedy and lighthearted focused, not really appropriate. So I was like, I'm just going to read another one of his blog posts. And he had a blog post about um, uh, someone he mentions briefly in Just Like Hamburger, Exactly Like Hamburger, who was his uh, his best friend who was schizophrenic, who killed herself. And um, it's a fucking gut-wrenching piece. And uh, this guy just, why, why did he do that? I saw that coming a mile away. <laughs> well, I guess we're talking about suicide, so it's appropriate. Uh, yeah, it's a fucking gut-wrenching piece. And that makes me not want to commit suicide, because I don't want to do that to someone. Like, I, I am a kind of a low-empathy person, but I'm not actually a psychopath. Uh, I just ha I <laughs> e Even for me, that's just too far. That's, like, really... That's something that's fucked up to do to people. And I know that from a logical perspective, it's I can't say anything, because it's like, well, if I'm not alive to see it, it basically doesn't even exist. But I can't actually convince myself that that's true. Just just on an emotional level, I don't think I could do that to someone. Uh, there was a point in my life where uh, things were bad enough for me where I, I could have. Or not even things were bad enough for me. I, I just, in, like, 
um, when I was younger, I had less impulse control, pretty simple. And so I would have done it without thinking. But at this point, you know how it is. You know how it be sometimes with with fe- feelings being bad. Um, anyhow, um, allow me to, uh, and now for something completely different. Uh, I've been reading this manga. Let me open it up. I was reading a manga, which I found on A, called Ani Toimoto no Shitai 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 Koto. Um, and it was really good. It's about a guy who fucks his sister. And it's really good, and only two chapters are translated. Now that makes me suicidal. <laughs> so I went on the manga's other stuff, and he'd, he's done another manga called Siskon Ani Tobroko ni Moto ga Shojiki ni Natara uh, which actually is fully translated and I'm reading that and it's okay, it's fine but it doesn't have the same edgy appeal of his other Siskon his or her, I don't actually know I'm just assuming it's a guy Um, it, it, yeah, the other one's much more dark and brooding. It's about a, the 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 one that I really liked, which I can't, I I don't know the fucking name off by heart. It's about a twenty-five-year-old hikikomori, who's like a failing, um, doujin hentai artist, um, and he's like very depressed, and then. Uh, he fucks his sister and then draws hentai about fucking his sister and gets published. Um, but he's very depressed and brooding and that makes it interesting because I like depressed hikikomori characters because I can relate to them. Um, whereas this one is more of just a standard... Um, it's kind of a plot I feel like I've seen before. I don't know if it's from that manga, but... Uh, was it adapted into an... Maybe I've watched the anime of this manga and don't even remember it because it's so generic. But it's it's a uh, it's just um hey oh wacky circumstances. I showed my friends a picture of you and said you were my girlfriend. Please pretend to be my girlfriend. Uh oh, and then that's that's pretty much high school. They're all in high school, and that's the sort of thing that happens. And it's fine. It's okay, it's nothing, it's not bad, it's not good. I mean, a lot of people would probably say it was bad, but I think it's fine. It's fun to read, I guess. I won't make it for a mistake. I think you're going to hear me say that sentence a lot. Oh, fuck. I was. I looked over to OBS. I, I didn't see where I was going. What? Are you kidding me? That's just bad luck. I thought I, I, it looked like that was on his head to me. But who am I to say what is and isn't on on someone else's head? And what the hell is on Joey's head? There's a video. There's a guy on YouTube who ma- who makes a bunch of viralish songs. Um, you've probably heard some of them, like redoing. For example, you've probably heard redoing at some point. He also made The Boys Are Back in Town brackets to kill you. Um, and then he made a sort of spiritual successor to that, which was called Kiss Me Brackets Kill Me. Um, all of which are, are very good. Um, but he also made one which is a little less popular than those, which is a, a remix of Photograph by, by Nickelback. I think it's Nickelback, whatever. A remix of, you know, look at this photograph. And it, it's, a, it's a pretty chill remix. But but in Photograph, the original song, I think, there is a lyric where they say, and what the hell is on Joey's head? And at the end of the song, like the remix version of the song, he just loops 
and what the hell is on Joey's head and and um has himself like scroll down to the comments uh in the own in his own video uh, or in the video photograph and um see someone asking what the hell was on Joey's head ha 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 and then someone respond uh, what what is or isn't on Joey's head is none of your concern and uh, and then he like looks it up and it's Joey from friends and he has like a a weird fucking alien monster on his head in all of the google images and just no one's noticed before and he he looks up like why why has no one noticed this like why wh- what is on Joey's head what the hell is that thing why has no one noticed this before what the fuck uh, and I thought it was a very effective <laughs> piece of, like, very strange horror, <laughs> which is kind of his speciality. Uh, and that sort of stuck in my head a bit. Just like that monster was stuck on Joey's head. What the hell is on Joey's head? i am wondering this myself. It's look who it is. Simple Flips keeps mentioning this this joke uh, where he says, look who it is, it's look who it is. Um, which I know is from a YouTube poop that I've seen before. Uh, but I don't know, I don't remember which YouTube poop. So if anyone knows which YouTube poop that's from and can, can tell me, that would be, that would be greatly appreciated. Because, uh, yeah. I had other stuff I wanted to talk about. I I remember starting recording thinking like, oh, there's there's like a bunch of stuff that I vaguely want to talk about. But I don't remember anything other than CSGO and suicide. Got very nostalgic yesterday. Went in, went in a very nostalgic sense of sense of mood. Sense of mood. That's not something people say. Type of mood. Um. Possibly because I was on opiates. And uh, I started blasting Muse. Now Muse is not a good band. I don't modern day no thank you does not care at all for muse however child no thank you had a muse album on his ipod uh, and so some of these muse songs uh, bring back nostalgia none of them was very good um but at the time i w- i was i was just feeling very nostalgic and i, s- I was kind of just sad i became saddened that like you only get to be a child once, you know? This this kind of classic nostalgia that, like, my childhood sucked, as does most people's, um, uh, and, like, that's it. Like, that's your one shot at having a childhood, and it fucking sucked, and I hated most of it. Um, and I got very sad about that. Uh, and now I'm, like, r- nothing has changed. Like, I haven't gone much better at dealing with... Uh, everything being shit but now like things are like now i have to do taxes and stuff it's just it's just it's it's it's, like unbearable (laughs) sorry this this i hope this podcast doesn't drive anyone to suicide uh by me complaining about this um that would that would be very bad um but yeah that's what i was sad about and so i was listening to some music from the 2000s that I liked. Um, And um, I was also getting really pissed off that no one makes good music anymore. I was was getting very mad about uh, how how all music, as I have been mad recently about this, uh, how, you know, people are just making sort of the same song over and over again. Uh, It's gotten to the point where I just, hold on, I gotta fix this thing. My mic pop filter has come loose, which I have a talent for doing. Okay. Um, everyone's just making the same song over and over again. And I, I, I realized 
when I, I I already sort of been having this feeling, and then the new Kendrick album came out, and a lot of people were were raving about this album, um, and I I went to listen to it, and I found it extremely boring, and um, I think it sort of cemented in my mind that for me I think hip hop is just over. I do not find it interesting at all. I I have especially sort of trap style hip hop but even like even this new Kendrick album which is I would say fits in the genre of experimental hip hop back when Death Grips was blowing up uh, or when I was getting really into Death Grips 2015, 2016, 2017 um, I think well that was cool (laughs) I think I listened to basically every experimental hip hop album um, and so I was listening to this new Kendrick album and I was just like, I wish I was listening to, to Dalek right now. Like Dalek is, uh, uh, or Clipping or something. Like it, it just it just felt like a bad, or, or the um, the anti-pop consortium, which is one that normally people know about. So there's my me flexing my knowledge on experimental hip hop. Um, Shouts out the anti-pop consortium. They're actually really good. Very underrated group. Um, and so, and uh, yeah, I was just like, none of this is as good as shit people were making years and years ago, but everyone's going to freak out about it because it's like something vaguely different from what they know about. And it has this one like trap song, which feels almost like a parody of a trap song, uh, but not in like a smart way. Like like Backseat Freestyle was a, a great postmodern version of a trap song, you know? It's like, it's an actual banger, but it also is like in and in context, it feels a specific place in Good Kid Mad City, blah, blah, blah. This one is a way worse song. The beat sucks. The lyrics suck. The flow sucks. Everything sucks about it. Um, the The music video is very on the nose. Uh, like it literally has text come up that says this shit hard. It's like, could you be more obvious that you're trying to make a statement here? Um, yeah, I fucking hate that song so much. I, I thought it sucked ass. And I, I can't say Kendrick fell off because I don't really like any of the other Kendrick albums that much. I just think they're they're pretty good. Uh, and I just realized, like, it's been like, I think I'm just over it. I think I'm just over this style of music. I think it's just really boring to me now. I think everything that could be done has been done. Uh, even, like, Rage. Uh, once you've heard, like, the f- uh, like five Rage songs, you've heard every Rage song. There's only about five things you can do with that genre. So... So hip hop is is dead, and uh, no one's come up with anything to fill the void yet. Like I feel like everyone else basically agrees with me. It's just that no one's come up with any with a better idea yet. So everyone just keeps listening to hip hop. Although I think maybe I would still like some '90s hip hop if I went back and listened to it. Maybe I've just been oversaturated with the same AO8s type beats. Um, there's nothing against rapping. It's like you wouldn't, you wouldn't say you got you, you listened to too much punk and got bored of guitar music in general. Like it's just kind of a sti- I, I, I'm yeah. Anyway, it's been a while since an album's grabbed me. It's it's been a long while since an album has really grabbed me and spoken to me in a in a in a deep way. I think since 2016, 2017. Um, yeah, I do like a lot of, I st- still f- like a lot of music that I h- hear for the first time, but but nothing that I think it will become like on repeat all time classic for me. GG. Which is maybe part of the reason why I'm having trouble making new music that sounds new and stuff. Should I call this video CSGO and Suicide? There is another era in my CSGO career, which is when I briefly tried to get into H&S, which is a, a game mode. Some people call it chase mod. Um... 
it's it, H&S stands for hide and seek uh, because I guess it originated as a hide and seek game mode, but it's evolved very quickly into sort of more like tag, more like uh, uh, where one, one the 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 CTs have to chase down the T's and they they have to knife them. Um, and in these very movement centric maps, and it's sort of like um like a PvP version of B Hop or or surf. It's sort of or KZ. It's sort of like a a like PvP KZ. Although I guess they already do have surf. What do they call it? So so they just call it surf PvP. I forgot what they they call it, but they do have that. Um. Yeah, there was a brief while when I was doing that. Is this guy called Linux? <laughs> Do you use Linux? <laughs> this guy is not having any of my Linux discussion. He is not he is not into it. Not into talking about distros. See, like the way I'm, I'm very confused sometimes as to where my bullets are going because it looks like my crosshairs on their heads, but um, I guess it's just subtly off. I should turn my max acceptable ping down, I think, because I've, I don't know, I have my reasons. I've also been playing a lot of Skate 3. I really like Skate 3. Maybe one of my favorite games. I also played Dishonored briefly, and um, let me tell you, that game, fucking overrated. Not not that good. Uh, pe people talk about, like, I, I, I really like, or I used to really like this YouTuber called Leadhead, who's like a a games analysis type of person and um their style sort of gets old quickly i suppose it's sort of a gimmicky type style very autobiographical i'm gonna die i, I lose this if he plays well if he doesn't throw i lose okay he threw he should have hit me at least three times there um and I got kind of bored but anyway uh that person really likes dishonored and has made a bunch of videos about dishonored i was never really interested in playing dishonored before but they made so many videos saying it was really good that it made me want to play dishonored and so i finally did it it's 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 a very cheap game cuz it's old i guess uh so it was, it was very cheap and i i I bought it and I played it and I thought it was fucking awful and none of the stuff they said about how good the game was was true like they kept praising how how much player freedom you have to to complete these objectives through through any route you 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 prefer but th this is just not true um <laughs> the 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 game really obviously tries to funnel you down very specific like two or three very specific routes but they also don't feel very well thought out uh, I don't like the mana system in the game at all um oh thank you i i typed thank you and then when i went back to touch the uh, asdw buttons my fingers were one space to the left so i was holding q caps lock as and i i tried to move and it didn't work so then i quickly like looked down to try and reposition and by that time i was dead that's what just happened there See us go funny moments about depression. It seems like everyone I know is depressed right now. I think maybe we've just had too much shit going on in the world. Like economic crises and health crises and political crises and war back to back. It just feels like everyone I know is depressed. Maybe it's because of that or maybe, maybe they're just independently depressed. My IRL friends are depressed. I'm depressed. My online friends are depressed. My girlfriend's depressed. 
well, s- sort of. I don't know how they're doing, actually. They don't, well, not because I don't pay attention to them, but because they don't know how they're doing. And also our sleep cycles have not matched up right now. We're, we're kind of flipping sleep cycles. <sighs> you don't care about any of that. That's, that's just, just details that don't matter. And speaking of details that don't matter, I, w- I wanted to go and buy, a, buy some energy drinks today, but I missed my opportunity. It's too, dark, too, too, too late now. All the shops are closed. So no energy drinks for me. I was talking about how I went on a nostalgia binge, uh, sort of, with with music. Uh, yesterday, I lis- and um, there's still stuff that I listened to when I was a kid that I that I really quite like. Um, I remember hearing about how uh, Mark Fisher really hated indie music, uh, or a lot of the music that I kind of grew up with. Like, he liked grime, and he just sort of shit talks, like, a lot of these indie, and for good reason. Uh, it was very hit or miss type of era, 2000s British indie pop. Um, but, like, Block Party are good, and that's the one I grew up with, and I still think they hold up pretty well. I like Block Party. Um, And some of you know, so you know what? Yeah, some of the other. Well, you know, you know, you you can't tell me that uh, fucking Mr. Brightside. If it comes on in a party, you know what I'm saying, right? You know what I'm trying to get to get get to with that. Uh, although the killers aren't British, I don't think. I don't remember if the killers are British or not. But y- anyway, he he's always like, no, you gotta listen to grime and and fucking garage and burial and dubstep and whatever. Um, and I get it because at the time there was all of this innovation going on, right? But none of that exists anymore in electronic music or in anything. Like, they're, they're, well, grime's basically dead. Uh, people sort of stopped innovating, and everyone, all of the rappers in the UK just make UK drill now, which is way less interesting. It's about 10 million times less interesting than grime. And I, I fucking love grime, don't get me wrong. And uh, there's they're just... Really, like, what did we have? We had hyper pop, and we had death grips. We had like we had death grips briefly, which was great. That was a good time. Everyone liked death grips. Uh, oh fuck, that didn't that didn't go how I expected it to go. I see you. Okay, yeah, Death Cups was a good time. Then there was sort of the, the like, I guess, Bones, Team Sesh, this this sort of era of music, the sound cl- like the birth of SoundCloud rap, and that was fun. We all liked that, even if it was not as maybe artistically interesting as Death Grips. <laughs> you know, it was fun. Uh, and then, and then everything went to shit, and now everything's shit, and everything will always be shit. Things will just continue to get worse for the rest of my life. Uh, but there's always good music somewhere, you know. There's also been a bunch of good music released since then. It's just not been good. In t- I guess there was also vaporwave. How how could I forget about vaporwave, which then transitioned into neo eighties retard bullshit outrun. Um, synth wave, God fucking kill me. Uh, but vaporwave and witch house were both very, very enjoyable. That was well played by that guy. Um, but but yeah, um, nothing. It, there's not been any interesting artistic movements, is what I'm saying. Nothing interesting has happened in a long time, and th- th- that 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 sucks. I guess that to me, unironically, the most interesting thing to happen to music uh, within recent memory is is uh incel core soundcloud uh, um i i think it's pretty good i like a lot of the incel core music especially i liked it a, a while ago it's so weird that i'm like pseudo associated with that scene but also like kind of not very strange situation here I keep wondering whether I should be doubling down on my insult core 
cred. Because... Oh, I actually hit that. Nice. I probably shouldn't be, given that I'm not an incel. <laughs> but then again, a lot of people who make incel core aren't incels. I'm wondering if I should post this on my main channel or my second channel. I guess you'll see by the time I up. Let's talk about the pros and cons. So firstly, this is going to be like an hour of, of CSGO gameplay where I talk about um, how I'm depressed and how everyone's depressed and how the world sucks. Oh, shit. I did not expect the, a man to be there. I was I was just sort of running around without thinking. Um. I'll post it on my main channel. Fuck it. Or not my main main, ch not my music channel, but the the backwards Uichenachton, Uichenachton, U zero, whatever. A lot of people are making interesting music these days. Oh, uh, sorry, interesting YouTube. I feel like that is one of the good things is that we have um, we have uh, our own sort of artistic movement going on here on YouTube. With the den for people. Oops, I bought an M4. I wanted to check my headshot percentage to see if I'm actually doing any well. Oh, fuck. Nah, I knew I would throw there. What are we, what are we talking here? 100% headshot? Well, there you go. That's basically what I want. I mean, the KD's not good, but 100% headshot, that means I'm training my aim properly, which is what I'm trying to do. What do you think about my Deagle? It has teams I don't support on it. Interesting, Molly. There's going to be a guy abs, I think, who's going to come kill me. No? Okay, I misread that, I suppose. You know I've never managed this jump. I know it's possible. I, I, ha I To be honest, I haven't spent time practicing it like other jumps, but... Negev equals no need skills. So true, King. Oof. This is not true, by the way. The Negev is a very skillful weapon. Am I just sick? I don't know. I just feel fucking weird. I just feel tired all the time, and I feel like I have no fucking energy, and I have, like, intense brain fog. And it's like, oh, that just sounds like depression. But it also could be something physiological, you know? Like, that's also stuff that happens when you have something wrong with you in a lot of different ways. Physically. So. Maybe it's literally a side effect of being fat. Because I'm also fat these days, which also makes me depressed. <laughs> that's why I did that. <laughs> That was a retard move. Oh shit. Uh, GG. Uh, I basically threw that by shooting my teammate for no reason. I wasn't expecting to hit him, to be honest. I just sort of turned into the fog and, and shot aimlessly. We're about to hit an hour on this strange Let's Play podcast thing. I think I might actually just call it here. Oh, but there's a new game on Crete. Uh, do I press accept?
Do I have a coin I can flip? Here. It was tails. That means no. That means I end the stream. It's not a stream, but whatever. Sorry to the three other people who were about to play Wingman, but uh, you don't you don't get to play right now. All right. Well, uh, this was a weird fucking video. I feel like I like I feel like I should end on a positive note, but I don't really have any positive notes to end on. Um muscle farming is very good and we should all be doing it it's it's a it's a it's the ultimate superfood here's here's the note i will end on um there are certain people in this world who want you to eat bugs or plant matter exclusively and to give up on red meat and chicken and all of the good things in life why well they have some fairly valid concerns some of them health concerns, but mostly environmental and sustainability concerns, and a lot of them are valid. Uh, some of them worry about the ethics of factory farming on a massive scale, perfectly reasonable concern. Some of them worry about the health issues associated with eating cheaply raised cattle fed on grains and um, injected with a lot of uh, you know, antibiotics and stuff, steroids perfectly reasonable concern a lot of them worry about the environmental effects of the amount of water and uh, grains required to to grow enough cattle and pigs to feed a population reasonable concern the amount of land taken up and the amount of deforestation that has to happen to provide that land to grow cattle you know what i understand what you're getting at and they say well plants the equivalent amount of calories in in plants takes up much less space than the equivalent amount of calories in meat um i have some counters to that but in the modern american way of farming uh, that is the most popular uh, the green post green revolution i should say way of farming industrial farming which is sort of the most popular way of doing it around the world the point is correct um it's not correct in other situations but sure i'll let you have this one so they say you got to live in the pod you got to eat the bugs you got to drink the fuel you got to eat become a vegan right um and what do they never mention you know why do they why do you have to do that well you know you need protein you get your protein from from either plant-based sources pea proteins and oats and and all of these things or um or from bugs because you you can raise them very simply they're very simple creatures that don't have emotions um uh they just sort of fly around they're cheap to to manufacture and easy and blah 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 you know what fits all of these it's more environmentally friendly and it's more sustainable and expandable and um yeah you know what has all of these things in spades and more? Bivalve mollusks. We're talking mussels. We're talking clams. We're talking oysters. We're talking scallops. Bivalve mollusks. Every single one of the things, all of these vegan alternatives to meat or fucking eating bugs and shit, every advantage they have already exists in the type of animal we already eat. It's not got any sort of brain. It has a very, very ridiculously simple nervous system. Probably simpler than most insects. Um, it's basically just a muscle and a filtration system. It's about as alive as a plant, I would say. Um, you know, there's no ethical concerns over eating them. They grow very easily. Not only are they very environmentally friendly, they actually clean up the environment because they're filter feeders. If you put them in a bed body of water, they will clean the water. They're very easy to farm. They farm uh, better than pretty much any other type of, of seafood. Uh, uh, and you can scale those farms pretty pretty indefinitely. And the farms are environmentally conscious. They don't take a lot of, uh, you know, you don't have to feed them on purpose. They just sort of take the food out of the water that's already there. And... Um, the the plankton and stuff which and they're not going to deplete the plankton in the ocean Th that's just not how plankton works and to put on top of all of that they're very healthy they're very delicious um, and on top of all of that their shells are made of calcium carbonate which they make by sucking 
the carbon out of the water that has been dissolved from CO2 um, in the atmosphere. Um, so they absorb carbon, and that carbon that's in their shells stays stable for millions of years. So they actually suck carbon out of the atmosphere and store it in a safe way, reducing the greenhouse effect. Uh, they're basically the perfect food, but no one wants to talk about this. Why aren't they trying to convince us to eat more bivalve mollusks? Let's think about that. Let's think about that. I won't make it any more obvious than that. I was thinking about it, but I won't. I'll just leave it there. <laughs>